So... God, I don't even know where to begin. I don't really know where to start with all this. We've been doing a lot of yoga classes at the yoga barn, just trying to get her groove and trying to kind of, I don't know, heal, if that's the right word. And Yeah, I think heal's the right word. I think a lot of the change and a lot of the healing isn't because it has to take place within ourselves. The trouble I think we both of us have been having a lot is coming from in here. It's not the external. I think it's funny because we left Canada uh, blaming the commercialist culture and the ego way of life and the, all of the things that we learned we couldn't relate to in Canada. We blame that for, I think, a lot of our pain. Um, but I think the first day we got here, I think we realized it was us. towards the sun, <laughs> following the sun. We managed to bring everything in one backpack mm -hmm. for personal belongings and workout clothes, and one backpack for our camera gear. So we had to figure out how to fit both of our personal belongings for four months into one backpack. And thank God it's gonna be soon. Made it to a boot. For a little sunburnt and very tired and exhausted. We've been here for two days. Mm -hmm. right. cars. <laughs> Going down the wrong way. And the jet like kind of comes and goes. Sometimes it like really hits you. Like I feel like right now I'm like really tired. Me too. And other days you're just up at 6 a.m. like nothing. So it's been a bit of a battle. <clears throat> but um, we're just been trying to figure out our ways here. It feels so nice to get out and it'd be warm. It's warm. I think what we really saw traveling from one end of the country to the other in order to get out was um, just this really strange cultureless terrain of commercialism and i think that's why we're kind of just dying to get out of canada and out of north america for a while all right well I made it to bali we made it to indonesia and i uh, haven't slept in like 48 hours and yeah, we flew on a hello kitty plane and, and really just sort of breathe in life and new culture and you know if you want to go to a coffee shop and get a coffee somewhere you don't have to choose between Tim Hortons and Starbucks. I guess that's what's kind of been pushing us away a little bit. So it's been a couple of days in Bali now and it's been great. It's been really really great. We're still trying to figure out this balance between work and us time and yoga time and shooting and it's been a little bit of a challenge for in that sort of way but one thing that it's starting to really spark in my mind is something that I'm really seeing is that for so long myself as a person was asleep quote unquote <laughs> and by sleep it's certain people that I, I still know and that I see that live this life that's just run by money, 
that's just run by status, by your power. The more I'm, I'm witnessing different ways of life and it's so much different. And it's so beautiful to see that, that you know, even though money was important, of course, to survive, it's not what's truly important in, in this existence, in this life. In the fall, actually at the late summer, I had an extremely bad disc herniation in my back. My L5-S1, for any of those out there that can relate to that, uh, extreme sciatica. And I was basically on my back for two and a half months. We didn't think we were actually going to be able to leave Ontario and come to the mountains and then out to here and start this journey of ours. End up getting a uh, steroid epidural, uh, which got me back on my feet in an incredible way. Um, just in time to leave and start all this. Well, we made it through customs. What I'm starting to really learn is that in this lifetime, I believe every single one of us has some sort of service to bring. And some of us may know what that is, and some of us may be following it already, which is great and wonderful. But a lot of us don't know, and I think when we start to awaken from that asleep state of mind, a lot of us start to feel lost. And I think I felt lost for a very long time before, you know, we kind of started Bow Beautiful and before I started to really explore my own self through yoga, through meditation. And I can relate to so many people that are out there that are still searching for it because it's not one of those things that, uh huh, you're just gonna find and you're gonna be happy. You know, it's gonna take a lot of trial and error to really find what calls to you, what really makes your heart sing, what makes you really happy to be alive and grateful to be alive. God, it's so funny because I feel like so many people have asked us, oh, so what are your expectations? Like, what are you guys planning to see or do? And it's weird because we're, we're not going with specific plans like obviously we know where we want to kind of see and where we want to stay for a bit but we don't have expectations for what's to come but i think one of the things that i'm really looking forward to we both just need to take a breath to take a breath and just to, like i was saying to mark i'm like i want to go and like get pants from a indonesian woman who made them with her hands or something to support her family i'd rather buy pants from her than go to I don't know, like urban outfitters and get it from them, you know? So. Oh, these walls. <laughs> so Every time we needed something on this trip, we ended up in a freaking mall. Oh, and it was just like, kill me. And it just oh. feels like the same thing over and over. And no matter how much you consume, it never fills the hole. And you just end up throwing it away anyway, so what's the freaking point? Canada as a country, as a landscape. It was insanely gorgeous. Na the nature was beautiful. But we just found that everywhere we went, it was the same freaking box store. Like, okay, what do you want to get to eat? We've driven through the prairies to the middle of nowhere, and it's Subway, or it's some wraps place that was in Regina and Manitoba, or it's McDonald's, or just a million franchises that are sucking the money out of that community and sending it to some head office somewhere so that everyone can feel like they're part of some, like, global brand. Like you pull into a new city and it's welcome to box store land again. It's the same Canadian tire. So anyways, we're just like, okay. Same freaking Walmarts. We're <laughs> ready to, to go on a new adventure. recognize that this journey isn't about traveling this journey is about healing and healing isn't about covering up because that'll just create scar tissue healing is about letting go there's layers and layers of years and years of 
the things I put myself through and the things I thought were important and the person I thought I was and how I identified with who I was and my worth and my story and everything that comes along with with what you're told when you live in a society where its culture and its values are so upside down. It's about the money in your bank account, it's about the car you drive, the clothes you wear, it's about all the things that don't really matter. Uh, and that's how people view you, so you end up viewing yourself that way. And then, well for me at least, then there's this fucking emptiness that comes along with it. Because no matter how much, how much you succeed and how much you earn and you consume and you put around your apartment and how nice it is and what floor it's on and all the things in Toronto that seem to fucking matter that didn't, no matter what, you're just left at the end of the day asking the same question I've been asking myself for the last five years. Who am I? And so healing is about letting all that go to make room for something else. I don't know what that something else is. But I have to be open for it and to it and embrace whatever comes because what else is there? So if you're out there and you are feeling lost, you just know that something's starting to shift, something's starting to change. You're not, you don't fit into a lot of the friends that you've known, or you don't fit into certain circumstances, or even your job or your career. Well, start listening to that. Start listening to that inner voice because, gosh, there's just, it's powerful. It really is, and it, it is so much greater than all of us. My doctor told me that my, uh, my back injury was from hockey. But now I'm certain that it's from years of causing myself endless amounts of pain. And that identity I've had of being a victim of my injury and being a victim of depression or whatever it is that I'm trying to fill that emptiness with. Well, that was my sad excuse for trying to find an identity. And now, well, I'm just grateful that our life has brought us to a point where we're so blessed to find a minute to stop all the noise and work on ourselves for a bit. Because, fuck, I, I really, I really know deep down I need it. Yes, being in Bali and being somewhere warm and peaceful and a different kind of energy does help. It, encur it, encourages. it encourages the change, but the real change, we have found out is that we have a lot of work to do within ourselves. Yeah, it's a journey inside, encouraged by a journey of experience. to get on a 12 hour flight to and another, Taipei and then another six or something and then after that five or six flight to Bali and then we're gonna go from there well we'll see you there <laughs>